Welcome to the Prophecy Club. I think I'm going to bring some good news to you today. I think we're going to be able to show you from the scriptures when America falls, and specifically, I believe that there's something we can watch for that will let us know just before the Russians attack, and I'll show you. Anyway, the title is When America Falls in Revelation, in other words, in the scriptures. Essentially, what I'm about to tell you is that there's three events that happen in the last days. One is the angel <clears throat> with an everlasting gospel flies through the midst of heaven, and I believe we will hear that angel. And I believe that that's going to be the warning just before the Russians attack us with nuclear weapons. And then Babylon America falls, and then there is a warning given, do not take the mark of the beast. I'll show you. Now, it's important that you understand this because... <laughs> I know that there's some folks that believe in a pre-trip, and you can continue to believe in a pre-trip. As long as you promise, if you wind up in a lot of trouble and Jesus hasn't come to get you, you're not going to fall away. You're not going to take the mark of the beast. You can believe in pre-trip if you want to. But I'm going to show you these scriptures are pointing to the fact that it doesn't happen that way. Okay, so this is the moments before Jesus ascends back to heaven. This is 40 days after the crucifixion. So he says, When they were, for, when they were come, therefore come together, they asked him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? What's, what are they asking? The disciples are asking him, Will you make Israel the leader of the world again? And he says, No, it's not for you to know about that. Meaning, that's not that time's not yet. But he goes on to say, you're going to be given power after the Holy Ghost come upon you. Then, verse 9, he was taken up into a cloud, and that cloud received him out of his sight. That's very important. <clears throat> That's a picture telling us what it'll be like the next time Jesus returns. So then the scripture goes on down to verse 11, and he says, the two angels standing there says, this same Jesus, which was taken up from you into heaven, shall show come in like manner as you've seen him go into heaven. Well, how did he leave? He left in a lamb body. He left wearing whatever clothes he had just uh, eaten fish. And remember, Thomas just felt the nail scars in his, in his hands and in his side. So he was not in a glorified body. When he comes to glorify us, he will come in a glorified body. Here is a picture of him leaving in not a glorified body. So he's saying, the angels here are saying, the same way you saw him go up is the same way he comes down the next time. And I'm going to show you that in the scriptures. In other words, he comes down before there's any kind of a rapture before anyone get their glorified body. He left in a lamb body. He comes back down in a lamb, lamb body. That's what those scriptures are saying. Now I'm going to show you. I'm going to prove it to you. Okay, now let's jump to the scripture that tears up the pre-trib rapture. And I looked and lo, a lamb stood upon the Mount Sion. Okay, now what's the Mount Sion? So I looked it up. Mount Sion is here in Israel. And in according to, if you want to go from Mount Zion to Mount of Olives, one place it's 19 minutes, 20 minutes, another place, another route it's 23 minutes. But it's not the same mountain, okay? The next time Jesus returns, when we get our glorified body, he returns here to the Mount of Olives. His feet set down on the Mount of Olives. But when he returns to Zion, that's not when we get our glorified body. When he here, I'll show you. So when he returns to Mount Zion, I looked and lo, a lamb. Notice it didn't say King of Kings and Lord of Lords. A lamb. He left in a lamb body. He returns in a lamb body. That's what these scriptures are saying. I looked and lo, a lamb stood upon the Mount Zion. That's not the Mount of Olives. This is not when we get our glorified body. 
and with him 144,000 having his father's name written in their foreheads. And I heard it now. I'm going to read through this next three verses real quickly. I heard a voice from heaven as the voice of many waters, the voice of a great thunder, and I heard the voice of harpers harping with their harps. And they sung as it were a new song before the throne and before the four beasts and the elders. And no man could learn that song but the 144,000 which were redeemed from the earth. Now, if you get my book, Secret Door to Understand Bible Prophecy, it will explain to you the 144,000 are actually one year old of the first year Jewish boys that are resurrected. And I'll give you a scripture for it, okay? <clears throat> anyway, these are they which are not defiled with women, for they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Now, here's the secret door. These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto God and the Lamb. When it says first fruits, those are the first fruits to come out of the grave. Now, they don't get their glorified body yet. No one gets their glorified body until first Jesus gets his glorified body. And where does he get his glorified body? He gets that at the marriage supper of the Lamb, which at this point is 50 days from when he comes down. That's on first fruits. And then he goes back up and he takes the barley and the wheat harvest, those people whose names are written in the book of life that are ready to go to the marriage supper. And then we go up to the marriage supper. At the marriage supper, he's brought before the ancient of days. And he's given dominion, glory, and a kingdom. For his dominion, Daniel 7 says, is an everlasting dominion. And his kingdom is that which shall not be destroyed, that all people, nations, and languages shall serve and obey him. At the marriage supper of the Lamb is when he gets his glorified body. He, next time he comes down, he does not come in a glorified body. The scriptures say he comes like a lamb. In other words, he doesn't have the power yet. All right, now let's go on. So these were redeemed from among men being the first fruits unto God. Those were the first fruits to be resurrected from the grave since Jesus came out of the grave. That's what it's saying. And in the mouth is found no guile, for they are without fault before the throne of God. Why is it that there's no guile found in their mouth? Because they, were, they died in their first year. They never learned to talk. So consequently, they couldn't say anything bad out of their mouth. Now, I made my point here. Next time Jesus returns is to Mount Zion in a lamb body. And the last time he returns, about four months later, is in a glorified body after he's been to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Now, let me explain this chart. If you're going to understand this, and that's one of the, the, the second vision he showed me is I need to write it in a book. He said, because some things cannot be understood by audio and video. They have to be written. That's the reason if you want to understand this, you're going to have to get the book. This chart is in the back of the book, right here. See this chart? This that, That's one of the charts. Here's the other chart. Okay, one chart, the other chart. They're in the back of the book. By the way, don't order it from Amazon because the charts aren't in the book from Amazon. That's only if you get them at prophecyclub.com. Prophecyclub.com. Anyway, so let me explain this chart briefly so that I can explain what I'm the point I'm trying to make. So the audible voice said, the seven seals play over seven years. This is the seventh year, okay? The seven trumpets play over seven months. The seven vials play over seven days. Got that? Seals seven years, trumpets seven months, vials seven days, but they all conclude on the Feast of Trumpets. Now, what I'm about to show you is, here at the Everlasting Gospel, this is when the angel flies through the midst of heaven having the everlasting gospel to preach to every, per, 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 every people, nation, language, and tongue, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to him, for the hour of his judgment has come. Worship him made heaven and the seas and the fountains of waters. I believe that every ear on the planet hears that. And when I hear that, if I'm still alive, I will believe 
that the within the next 24 hours, probably, could be a day or two, but probably within the next 24 hours, that's when the Russians will attack nuclear bombs land all across America, and that's the, the everlasting gospel, and that's then when the Russians attack, is Babylon fallen one? Then there's a mark warning given. Don't take the mark of the beast. I'll read that in a second. And then Jesus returns out here in his glorified body. Now, let me put that into a different chart here. This is, well, let me explain. Okay, so this is from seven years from here to here. This chart is seven months from here to here. So this is the last seven months. So, when the angel flies through the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, I think I've got this in a closer chart. <clears throat> he flies through the midst of, 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 the, of, the, of, the, of the land, uh, of the year, having the everlasting gospel here. 50 days, exactly 50 days from first fruits is Pentecost. We go to the marriage supper of the Lamb on Pentecost. And I've explained to you how we know that the marriage supper of the Lamb takes place on Pentecost. At Pentecost, we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. It's not about us. It's about Jesus. All we get there, we do not get our glorified body. We get a wedding garment, period. And that's all. And we get to see Jesus brought before the ancient of days where he's given dominion, glory, and a kingdom. He is then given many crowns, a vesture dipped in his own blood. Then he comes forth and he serves us for about four months at the marriage supper of the Lamb. Then, about four months later, he gets a white horse along with us. We're still in our not glorified body because when he returns, and when he opens with the breath of his mouth, when he blows out his sword out of his mouth, which is the glory, that glory not only dissolves the star, sun, the moon, the stars, it goes to the center of the earth, sets the foundations of the mountains on fire, whether we're on a horse, whether we were in the grave, where we were alive on there, wherever we are in the universe, at that instant, we get our glorified body. At that instant, for us, eternity starts. And that glory as it hits the tares, they fall to the ground and pile of ashes and bones. As it hits <clears throat> Lucifer and all of his people, they, well, that's complicated. I don't want to get into that. But as it, it hits the tares, they're burned. As it hits those people whose names are not in the book of life, but they didn't take the book, the, the mark of the beast, they're also burned. If they took the mark of the beast, they do not get soul death. They're tossed into the lake that burns the fire and brimstone with the beast, the false prophet, and a thousand years later, Lucifer is added with them and they are tormented for all eternity with no hope of escape. Now, let me go back to this. Okay, so Jesus, the next time he returns, he'll come down on first fruits in a lamb body. He resurrects 144,000 one-year-old Jewish boys and they walk around for 50 days and then... On probably the 49th day, the angel flies through the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel. This is your last chance. If you want to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, if you want to not be burned in whatever the Russians are about to heap on us, this is your last chance. Then we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Four months later, we return with him on our white horses. And this is the judgment seat of Christ. This is judgment by fire. Jesus is the judge at the Bema seat or the judgment seat of Christ. And then 10 days later at the great, great, great white throne, Jesus is also the judge there also. Okay, let me go to the scriptures now. So Revelation 14, 6 says, And I saw another angel flying in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach to them that dwell on the earth, to every nation, kindred, tongue, and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory unto him. For the hour of his judgment has come, meaning the Russians are about to take America out. And worship him that made heaven and the earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. This is a person's last chance if they want to be able to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. Here it is in this chart. Everlasting gospel up here. America falls here. Then the mark warning. Same three events. Okay. 
Uh, same three events here, Everlasting Gospel, Babylon Fallen, Mark Warning, and then out here is when Jesus returns, and that is the total destruction of America. This destruction of America comes because of sins in the church. This one comes because from here to here, there's a lot of Christians killed. This judgment comes upon those people that killed the Christians because they killed the Christians. Now let's go to the next scripture. And there followed another angel, or a second angel, saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen, that great city, because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication, because America caused the rest of the world to fall away from Jesus, is the reason God judges her. This is the scripture that tells us that America has fallen. Now, there's other places that talk about it, but this is in the order. Not everything in Revelation is in order. Now, remember, I, in 2017, I memorized the book of Revelation, so I know what I'm talking about, okay? There followed another angel saying, Babylon has fallen, has fallen. I believe that this is when the Russians attack and take America out. This is right after the angel says, Fear God and give glory unto him, worship him, made heaven of the seas and the fountains of water and all that. Now, the third angel followed, followed. so this is, this is confirmation. You take that mark of the beast, and you don't get soul death. That's what it's about to say. The third angel, now this is, at this point, America has fallen. I believe the Russian bombs have hit. I think the Russians bomb hit in Revelation 14, 8. And the third angel followed them, saying with a loud voice, if any man worship the beast in his image and receive his mark in his forehead or in his hand, the same shall drink of the wine of the wrath of God that has poured out without mixture into the cup of his indignation. And he shall be tormented with fire and brimstone in the presence of the holy angels and the presence of the Lamb. And the smoke of their torment ascendeth up forever and ever, and they have no rest day or night who worship the beast in his image and whosoever receiveth the mark of his name. Meaning, a person takes that mark of the beast, they can chisel it off their forehead, they can cut their hand off, but they will spend all of eternity with the beast, the false prophet, and then a thousand years later, Lucifer is tossed in there too, with no hope of escape. So, let me back up. So the first angel goes through the midst of the air, and I believe every person on earth, this is the last warning, the last warning to the world, the last warning to America, that if you want to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, if you want to avoid what is coming, then this is your last chance. And then, of course, these are the uh, charts that show you this. So the angel flies here, Russians attack here, then there's a mark warning here. In other words, America falls, and there's nothing else to stop the mark of the beast from coming forth. So these last four months are hell on earth. Then the second angel is America falling. The third angel is saying, don't take the mark of the beast. Now let's go on. Here's the patience of the saints. Here are they that keep the commandments of God and the faith of Jesus. Why is it saying saints have faith, have patience? See, patience it means in Revelation means don't fall away from Christ because many people at this point will. When America falls, even the angel told Dimitri, all the nations will be terrified. When the greatest nation in human history is taken out in one hour, all the world is terrified. That's what it's saying. But it's saying, have patience, don't fall away. In another four months, I'm coming back. I'm going to fix this thing. But these next four months, while we're at the marriage supper of the Lamb, if they were not ready, it's going to be hell on earth. And I heard a voice from heaven saying to me, Right, blessed are the dead which die in the Lord from henceforth, yea, saith the Spirit, that they may rest from their labors, and their works do follow them. Why does it say their works do follow them? Because apparently before that, many Christians will get in, but their works do not follow them. But this is saying, even though you weren't ready to go to the marriage supper of the Lamb, even though you didn't get to go, 
your works still follow you. And I think that's another confirmation of what I'm saying here. This is the way it all works out. So, the last, for, again, from this is the last seven months. From here to here is the last seven months. Now, each trumpet does not play one per month. Matter of fact, I think these first four play pretty quickly. <clears throat> so, the angel flies through the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel, and then probably a few days, hopefully it's even 50 days, but it might not be that long, then America falls. When America falls, immediately the other angel flies through the midst of heaven, giving them the mark warning, saying, do not take that mark of the beast. Do not do it. Here it is on the other chart. Everlasting gospel. Then we go to the marriage supper of the Lamb. And, and what Vicky go forth Parnell was told, and I believe she's correct, that when the bombs come down, we go up. Not in a pre-trib rapture. I don't believe that. I think we go up to the marriage supper of the Lamb. I think that's scriptural. Right, I, I showed you the scriptures. Okay, now, let's jump to 414. 14, 14. And I looked, and behold, a white cloud. And upon the cloud one sat like the Son of Man, having on his head a golden crown. Now, this is Armageddon. Let me show you on the chart here. Okay. Okay, so Jesus comes down the next time in the Lamb body here. Everlasting gospel is preached here. We go to the marriage supper of the Lamb here. Then Jesus returns here for Armageddon. So now these scriptures are talking about Armageddon. And another angel came out of the temple, crying with a loud voice to him that sat on the cloud, Thrust in thy sickle and reap, for the time has come for thee to reap, for the harvest of the earth okay, is ripe. And he sat upon the cloud, thrust in his sickle on the earth, and the earth was reaped. Another angel came out of the, so this is a second angel, came out of the temple which is in heaven, he also having a sharp sickle. So there's two angels. So Jesus is riding a white horse. He has the morning star. Following him are two angels having sharp sickles. Following him are the armies in heaven. Following the armies in heaven are us. Coming from the marriage supper of the Lamb, we do not have a glorified body yet. Only Jesus has the glorified body until he brings out the morning star. Another angel came out of the altar which had power of fire and cried with a loud voice to him that had the sharp sickle, saying, Thrust in thy sharp sickle and gather the clusters of the vine of the earth. When it says, gather the clusters, this is the Euphrates River being dried up so that the kings of the east or east are gathered. This is gathering the Russians, Turkey, uh, Ethiopia, all, go to Ezekiel 38, 39, all of those nations. Everybody on the earth is gathered, every, every army is gathered to come down and attack Israel. That's part of the plan. Because Ezekiel 38, 4 says he has put a hook in the Russian's jaw, and I believe that hook is oil. So he puts a hook in the jaw of the Russians and all the other people that follow him. Remember, Dimitri said, and then God will raise up China, Japan, and many other nations. They'll go against the Russians. They'll defeat the Russians. They'll back the Russians to the gates of Paris where they sign a peace treaty. But they make the Russians their leader. Under the leadership of the Russians, there it is, under the leadership of the Russians, all the world goes down to attack little Israel. Israel can't counter the help of Jews in America, so she cries for Messiah. Jesus returns on the clouds. That's what this is talking about. And the angel thrust in his sickle into the earth and gathered the vine of the earth, that's the armies of the earth, and cast it into the great winepress of the wrath of God. And winepress was trodden without the city. In other words, where Jesus shed his blood, which was just outside the city, that's where he's going to drag the Russians and all of the other armies of Satan down to just outside the city, the same place Jesus shed his blood, He's going to bring his enemies down there and he's going to shed their blood on exactly the same place. The winepress was trodden without the city and blood came out of the winepress even under the horse bridles by the space of 1,600 furlongs. So there you have it. That's how it actually happens. Now, to conclude, <clears throat> let's jump to the rest of the story about Armageddon. 
This again is Jesus returning. Again, Jesus on the white horse, two angels with sickles, the armies in heaven behind them, and then behind the armies in heaven, that would be us coming from the marriage supper of the Lamb. And I saw heaven opened, and behold, a white horse. And he that sat upon him is called faithful and true, and in righteousness he doth judge and make war. So he's judging, he's making war. This is Armageddon. He's not in a lamb body. Now he is in his glorified body. His eyes were as a flame of fire, and his head were many crowns. He had a name written which no man knew but he himself. He was a clothed in a vesture dipped in blood, and his name is called the Word of God. And that dipped in blood, that would be his blood that was sacrificed uh, on the cross. And the armies which are in heaven followed him on white horses. That would be us, clothed in fine linen and white and clean. And out of his mouth goeth a sharp sword, that's the morning star, that with it he should smite the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron, and he treadeth the winepress and the fierceness and wrath of Almighty God. And he hath on his vesture and on his thigh a name written, King of kings and Lord of lords. Why? Because he's not in a lamb body anymore. He came down with a lamb body when he went to Mount Zion. Now he's going to Mount of Olives. This is a King of kings and Lord of lords. And I saw an angel standing in the sun, and he cried with a loud voice, saying to all the fowls that fly in the midst of heaven, Come, gather yourselves together under the supper of the great God, that you may eat the flesh of kings and the flesh of captains and the flesh of mighty men, and the flesh of horses and them that set on them, and the flesh of all men, both free and bond, both small and great. And I saw the beast and the kings of the earth and their armies gathered to make war against him that sat on the horse and his army. And the beast was taken, and with him the false prophet, which wrought miracles before them, with which he deceived them that had received the mark of the beast, and them that had worshipped his image. These both were cast alive. I want you to look at this word here, alive. Why are they cast alive? Because their body is given to the burning flame, Daniel chapter 7 says. But they are cast alive. Their soul is cast into the lake that burns the fire and brimstone. They don't get soul death. They are tormented day and night forever and ever and ever and ever with no hope of escape. Anybody who takes that mark of the beast. So whatever happens, don't take that mark of the beast. These both were cast alive in the lake burning with fire and burning with brimstone and the remnant was slain by the sword of him that sat on the horse which sword proceeded out of his mouth and all the fowls were filled with their flesh. That's the morning star. Same thing happens with the two witnesses. These are my two witnesses standing before the God of the earth. If any man hurt them, fire proceedeth out of their mouth and devoureth their, wit, their, their enemies. If any man hurt them, he must in this manner be killed. That's the morning star. And him, and him that overcometh and keepeth my works to the end, the same will I give power over the nations. And he shall rule them with a rod of iron. And as the vessels of a potter, they should be broken to shivers, that's ashes, even as a receiver of my Father, and I will give him the morning star. That's the morning star. Destroys both body and soul, and that's what Jesus uses to destroy all of the people that come against Israel for Armageddon. I recommend if you want to have your wealth not lost, if you've got it in an IRA, if you've got it in a 401k, if you've got it in a bank, if your wealth is in paper, As Lindsay Williams said, it's worth the paper it's written on. In other words, it's about to be worthless. So I'll send you to prophecyclubgold.com. You can also reach them. Call 800-200-4653. 800-200-4653. They'll give you some ideas on what to do. That is their job, to help you not lose your wealth. I also recommend you go to josephkitchen.com. Get yourself a machine package. That's the wherewithal to grind the wheat berries into flour. Put those into a bread machine with five other ingredients. Push about two hours and 40 minutes later to have a nice hot loaf of whole wheat bread. I've had many people email me. They absolutely love the bread. They love the whole idea. And see, because it's long-term storage food. And as in the days of Pharaoh, what fed the world for seven years? It was wheat. I believe wheat is... God's food for famines, for God's famine food. 
it is, there are no perfect one food a person could eat for their whole lifetime and be totally healthy. But in my opinion, bread may come the closest. I mean, why does God call us the wheat? <laughs> wheat and the tares, okay. I think it's because the primary thing we're supposed to be eating is wheat. So go there, and then after you get the machine package, that's all of the mechanical things to make the bread, then you decide how much food you want. By the way, most of your long-term storage food, you're talking nine or $10,000 to feed one person for one year. Did you get that? Nine to ten thousand dollars, one person one year. Joseph Kitchen can show you how to do it for about a thousand dollars per person. We're not talking about half price. We're not talking about eighty percent less. We're talking about like ninety percent less than what the other people can tell you that they can get you long term storage for. I do not know of anybody that can beat that. This is an actual loaf of bread that I actually made. I, I eat bread. I mean, it's, it's, I also have to say that uh, it's brought my cholesterol down. It's brought, brought my blood pressure down. And I, that I don't get hungry as often. I typically will have a slice for breakfast and a slice for lunch and then a normal meal for whatever. And I've lost, uh, what, oh, 30 pounds over the last year. And in my opinion, I think the primary thing is that did it was, of course, watching what I eat and, you know, all the other things, but bread. So I eat bread as the primary source. And it's also, it'll reduce your food budget, too. Anyway, go check it out.